When I started preparing for today's tip video, it was pretty simple. I just wanted to share with you how to do mirror stamping so that you can punch out shapes that face two different directions. So when you think about a stamp in your set, let's say it's a bear, it may face right and your punch or die that coordinates with it also faces right. What if you want a bear that faces left? What if you want a bear that faces right and a bear that faces left to face each other? Wanted to share a tip with you for how exactly you can create these mirror images. Then I started creating a card with my mirror image birds that I'll be using. And we got all kinds of tips and all kinds of techniques worked into this one fun card. I'm excited to share them with you today. Let's get started. Here you can see the card that I'm going to be sharing with you today, the tips and techniques for how to create a beautiful work of art such as this one. We'll start with how to do mirror stamping. So the bird in my stamp set and my punch, it faces right. I'll share with you how to create the one that faces left and get it punched out. Then we'll talk about how to get that water watercolor look on the birds using some spritzing, some uh, sponge daubers. Then I'll share how to create that amazing background with all kinds of texture and interest and watercoloring and some other techniques. Here's the stamp set I used that I wanted to share with you first. It's called Sweet Songbirds. It comes with this cute punch and you can use it for really simple projects like these treat holders. So I wanted to share these with you before we get into all of the fun things we're going to be doing with this set today. I wanna to start by sharing how to create that mirror image. So I need my Stamparatus for this. And we also need a silicone craft mat, which is right here. If you're interested in information on this, I will link you to a video right here with more information. So I have a punch from the punch that I punched out. How many times can I say punch? And I wanna look at it to make sure I'm laying it on my mat the correct way. If I lay it on this way, this is not going to work. It needs to lay the same way as my punch. So I'll say, lay that right here. And what I wanna use this for is, this is actually only if I wanna do more than one piece at a time. But because I was doing some of the wings and the bird at the same time, that's why I'm doing this. Now, if you're just doing the bird on its own, don't worry about that. You can skip this little step right here, but you wanna lay whichever pieces you're going to be punching at the same time on there. Rotate the plate over and mount those stamps. So now we can remove that punch out. And what we're going to do is to ink this stamp. We will do this the easy way first, just by inking with one color of ink. So I'm going to bring in some pool party. I am going to ink this just like that. And I'm going to stamp onto my silicone craft mat. Now, sometimes I did this a couple of times. If you want to re-ink and re-stamp, you can, just to make sure you get good coverage. What I'm going to do is bring in some paper very carefully lay that on top, making sure not to move it. I don't wanna get anything smeared and stamp one more time. So what we have here is the bird facing right on the top and the bird facing left on the bottom. So here is where you get that mirror image that you can punch. So what you have to do is use the top side, the one facing the correct direction the way it was designed, to punch. And then when you flip over the backside, you have that same image facing the opposite direction. Now let me share with you how to do this, but with the really fun watercolor effect that I got on my cards today. So I wanna clean off the stamp to make sure I don't get any of my ink colors mixed up and my silicone craft mat. And we will create one of these. First, I'll share with you how I did this for a, the birds facing the normal direction. So in this case, the ones facing right. So what I did, I used some sponge daubers and my ink. For this one, we'll use pool party and crumb cake. I played around with some of my browns, blues, and pinks for this. And I really loved the way they came out. So I am going to cover the wing and the bird with some pool party ink and my sponge dauber. 
How heavy you go definitely affects how dark these turn out. So you can play around with that some. Then I am going to add some of this crumb cake. We'll do it a little bit darker down here and then a little on the edges over here. Keep in mind if you have one color of ink on your stamp and you use a dauber over top of it, this may soak up some of that color. So if you prefer, what you can do is ink with your pool party first in certain areas, go ahead and stamp that and then repeat with the crumb cake. But this is the way I did it. I found it a little bit easier and I was just careful to just put ink in certain areas so that they didn't soak up the opposite color. So I inked that. Now, for one of these that I am stamping and punching without the mirror image, just the regular image, what I did, I take a stamp and spritzer full of water and spritz one time over top bring in my paper and I'm using shimmery white cardstock for all of this project today because I find the colors blend a little bit better on it and now I have this stamp so that I can punch it out now what if you want to do the same thing but you want to do it with that mirror image because I did some of these this way and some of these the other way and here is what I will do this time. I will ink this up the same way again. And then I'm actually going to spritz on my paper instead of spritzing on the stamp. So this just gives you a couple of ways to spritz. I, I haven't demonstrated using these spritzers for quite a while, but you can create some really amazing projects when you spritz over your ink. So what I'm going to do is spritz on the back of my paper. I take that back before I spritz on my paper. I'm going to stamp this on my silicone craft mat really well. Sometimes when I lift up, I find I have a little opening right there. So sometimes I did this a few times. You could re-ink and stamp it again if you want. Now I want to bring in my paper. I want to spritz the side I'm going to lay down. And I found that I only wanted to spritz once. I did try spritzing a couple of times and the color moved around a little bit more than what I wanted it to. So I laid the spritz side down very carefully again, not to smear anything. Stamp again, and let's look and see what the effect is. So this reminds me to mention, I found when I was playing around with this that how I applied the ink with the sponge daubers really affected the end effect. So on this one, you can see I didn't really blend out my crumb cake, the tan color around the edges. I didn't really blend it out very well. It's very definite crumb cake on the edges and that pool party in the center. So I played around with that to try and get a really nice blend that looked better. Now something else you can do if you wanted to blend more without redoing it is just to take this and spritz it again or maybe even spritz it a couple of times and that will help those colors to move around a little bit. So here with this one we just created, we can use this side to punch it out. And then when we flip it over, we will have that mirror image. So that should cover how to do mirror images. Now you can play around with this with lots of die cuts, lots of punches, but I just thought that was really fun. And with the watercolor spritzing effect, it just added a new level of, of art, uh, art, let's call it artistry to the project. Now what I wanna share with you is how to create this beautiful background for this card. I use several techniques, tools, unique products to create this, and I wanna share that with you here. So the first thing I want to do is actually bring in my water painters. I will be using a couple of water painters for this. For this, I want to use just one of the smaller ones. I do have one with a larger tip like this, but we will save that for later. I want to bring in my water painter. I am using shimmery white cardstock, like I mentioned. This measures three and three eighths by eight and three eighths, I believe. I had to think about that for a second. So for a slimline card, that's what I created. Now keep in mind, you can make a regular A2 size card with this idea. 
and just scale back how long the branches are and everything and maybe just put two or three birds on it. But I have shimmery white cardstock. I'm going to bring in my soft suede ink pad and a block. And I wanna pick up some of that color. So I am going to just lay it upside down on the ink pad. Now I can use this for my palette to pick up that color. And from here, I am just going to start painting. So I'll bring in this sample that you can look at to see what I'm trying to accomplish. I'll be using this here in a few minutes to finish what I wanted to share with you. But I'm gonna squeeze some water from the barrel of my water brush, my water painter, and just mix that around so I can squeeze just a little water and keep it really nice and dark. I can squeeze a lot and really water it down. It's always best to start with less ink Start with a lighter color and then add more if you want to. If you get it too dark at first, you can't, well, it's hard to go back and remove that color. Now, when you're watercoloring like this, it is possible to make it a little bit lighter, but you don't really want to count on that because sometimes you just can't lighten it up. So what I did, and I'm going to tell you right now, I am not an artist. Uh, where I found the idea for this actually was I wanted to make these birds and make them look watercolored like. So I actually searched on an image search on Google. You could do it on Pinterest. You could do it pretty much anywhere. I searched for watercolor bird painting. And the very first thing that popped up was a painting that looked much like this card we we're making today. And I thought, wow, that is so beautiful. And I loved it. And I just decided I wanted to make this with you today. So I just looked at the branch. Actually, I changed it from the painting. In the painting, it was basic, it looked more like a closed line they were sitting on, but I turned it into looking more like a branch and as you can see, this is pretty carefree. Uh, I did try to make this branch wider over here on the left side and narrower over on the right side, just to make it look like it's coming off of a tree that's over on this side. You can play around with this as much or as little as you want to, but hopefully you can see from what I just showed, it's really not too difficult. And if you look at your branch and you think, oh, mine just does not look as good as hers. Remember this, what is it? Comparison is the, you have to tell me. It takes away all your happiness. Don't, don't compare to me. And remember this on this card right here, I didn't really like how the branch looked, but once I put the birds and everything else on here, you hardly even see it. It's just kind of in the background. So keep that in mind. So first we wanna paint that line. The next thing I decided to do to add some texture around the outside was to do a little stamping with a texture stamp. Pulled this in from the Daffodil Daydream set. Really, really love these texture stamps. So I'm going to use this with some crumb cake ink. And I did this several ways, but the more I did it, the more I decided the way I liked to do this was to start on the edge and stamp once and then just come in farther and farther and stamp several times. By doing it this way, you get darker on the outside and a really nice faded effect as it comes in. And I thought that worked really well. So I'll do the same thing in a few spots. Try to do this in a somewhat haphazard way. Uh, I would be tempted to do this just on the corners, but I figured it would look a little nicer if I made it a little bit more haphazard than that. Okay, so here is my stamping using that texture stamp. The next thing I want to do is to emboss this using an embossing folder and my die cutting machine. I am using the, the, the name just left me, Time Worn Type Embossing Folder. I'll bring my machine in here. And you may be wondering, well, how in the world do we emboss a slimline card with an embossing folder that is not that long? So let's 
let's get right to that and I'll show you. So I wanna start this over here close to the left side. I'm going to put this side into the machine first. I'm going to keep the back edge of the embossing folder right here at the back edge of my platform just to make it easy to tell how far this is all going into the machine because we will not send this all the way through. So we'll crank it through most of the way, but when it gets almost to the center there, you see my gray top plate for my embossing. When it gets almost in the center, I wanna send it back. If you go all the way through, you're going to get a funny line right there that we will not be able to blend very well. So you don't wanna send it all the way through. Open it up. Now shift this over to where that embossing comes maybe half, in, half an inch or an inch inside the left edge of the folder. You wanna make sure it's straight. This one has very faded uh, writing on it. So I wanna try and keep it straight so those lines still look generally like they're in the same direction. Again, I'm going to put this so that the embossing folder lines up with the back of the platform. Put this on top so that all of that lines up. Now I am going to do basically the same thing. I wanna get it through enough so that the full piece is embossed, but I don't really want to overlap it a whole lot. And let's take a look at this and you can see what we have gotten. And because this embossing folder is kind of rustic, it's not real even, there's irregular places, you cannot even tell where the embossing comes together on this. Now I'll mention this because there is beauty in imperfection, my friends. This one, my first one with my finished sample, there was a spot right here in the middle that I didn't go quite far enough when I sent it through the second time that it wasn't wasn't embossed very much right here. But again, after you get all your pieces on top, you will not even notice. So after we emboss, the next thing I wanna do is play with some embossing paste. Embossing paste is so much fun. It's actually a really simple way to add a really neat effect to your projects. So I'm bringing in a mask. This is called the, it's from the Butterflies and Flowers mask set. I shared a tutorial not too long ago on this and made some really cool cards with it. I'll link you to that if you wanna take a look at it. And I need a few other things. I'll bring in my silicone craft mat again. This is really helpful for this to make it easy to clean up the mess. I have a palette knife, my embossing paste, and I'm going to bring in one of my ink refills for Sahara Sand is the color. I don't need a lot of this. I actually could probably have a little bit less than I have right there. I'm gonna scoop it out. When you use embossing paste, be very, very careful to get it closed up really tight. I left the foil piece on top of here for a reason to help with that seal. And sometimes I actually put a double layer of wax paper in there as well before I shut it to keep it really nice and tight. It can dry out if you don't seal it up, but if you do keep it really well sealed, it does keep for a long time. I'm going to add one drop of Sahara sand. On one of my samples, I used a little bit more of the Sahara sand. On one, I used a little bit less. You can play around with if you could just leave this plain white if you want, but I thought it was, was trying to create this kind of vintage rustic look. So that's why I add a little, little bit, added a little bit of color. And then if you want to use some washi tape or some removable tape to hold everything in place, you can. Since I was just doing small areas, I found that it worked pretty well for me just to hold it temporarily and then move it to the next spot. So I'm just laying this in one spot and I'll bring this up close. So you can see it a little bit better, but you can see that adds a really neat design it, and it adds actual texture that is raised up and just a really, really neat effect to add to the card. So what I am doing, I wanna keep the edges 
of the mask away from where I will actually stop applying the paste. If I go all the way to that edge, I'm going to end up with a straight edge on my flowers with my paste. And I don't really want that. I want it to be more of an irregular look where I stop doing this. We'll add a little bit more down here. You can decide whether you want any of this on top of your branches or if you wanna stay away from your branches. If you do put this over top, it will cover up some of that color for the branches. So just keep that in mind. So I'll add a little bit more there and I am going to call that good with my embossing paste. Now you do wanna clean up your tools from embossing paste quickly or keep a container with some water in it near your stamping area and just place them in there until you can wash them because the paste does dry very hard and it is very difficult to clean after it is dry. I'll bring in my other background that I've already prepared that has dried because you will wanna let that embossing paste dry for a little bit. And we are going to do two more things to this. One, I want to add a little bit more watercolor effect, which you absolutely would not have to. Uh, but this just shows you, if you do wanna play around with all these techniques on a card, the effect you can get. So wanted it to look a little bit more blended instead of just the paste and the trees, branches, wanted it to blend together a little bit more. So I'll get my larger larger water painter. I want my crumb cake ink this time. I want my lighter color of ink and I am going to pick up some of that ink right here and do this the same way. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit of ink right here. I can mix it to get a lighter, darker color like when I did those branches. And then it just starts sweeping over the surface. So if definitely towards the center, you wanna be very careful about applying it if you think there's more color there than you want. Uh, definitely towards the center, I would encourage you to keep it lighter. On the edges, if it gets a little bit darker, it won't really take away from your project. There, I'll go a little darker. But you can just play around with this and see what happens. And again, I am going to say this, when I did this on that sample card I've been showing you, the one that's all finished, I didn't love how the watercoloring turned out, but once it all comes together, you don't see those little imperfections. So here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water, plain water and blend back and forth. You can do that. Now we have that watercolor effect across the entire background. The very last thing I did for the background before I assembled my card was to rough up the edges a little bit. So I really like all the texture, the aged effect, and I thought the distressing would add a nice touch as well. So bring in my snips. You may wanna wait till it's all the way dry to do this and may make it a little bit easier, but I just use these along the edge, both directions to rough that up. And that's how I got those distressed edges. I did think about a couple of tips with the birds that I forgot to mention. So I wanna finish that before I forget. Let's talk about the eyes and the beaks and how I got the color onto their breasts and also the, the shimmering effect. So first let's stamp the eyes and the beaks. I just, just to make this simple on this one, I'm going to use crumb cake for both of these. So for crumb cake on some of these, I stamped directly to get a little bit darker color. And on some of them, I actually stamped off onto scrap paper and then stamped onto here the second time for that faded effect. So keep that in mind. I'll just stamp directly here to get that little bit darker color. And then there is a little opening where the beat goes. This one got a little blended because of the spritzing. But whatever color you want, just ink it up and line it up, which will be difficult for me 
with my camera in the way, but just stamp just like that. And again, if this is a darker color than you want, then stamp off first. I did stamp off, I think on most of these beaks actually, because I really like the faded colors on this and I didn't want to overpower it with really bright eyes or beaks. Sounds kind of funny, right? So after I did that, to add color to the breasts, I used my water painter and these same colors that I had before. Now this one still has some soft suede from my branch on it. I just got a little bit of that off and I'll go ahead and just show you, this is a little bit darker color than I used on the others and it's probably not the color I might've chosen that Calypso Coral is the darker pink you see here. Uh, so I might've used that or some petal pink like I did on the lighter pink ones. So add some color that way. Might blend that a little bit just to get it to blend into the outside areas. And then the very last thing I did with the birds was to add one final touch with some Wink of Stella. This is a glitter brush. If you've never seen this, it is amazing because glitter makes everything better and it stays put, it doesn't come off. So on some of these, I added glitter the Stella over the entire bird. On some of them, I just added it kind of at the top of the bird or on the wing. So you can see here how I did that. So thanks so much for watching along today. If you're interested in any of these products, you can find links in the video description below. I really appreciate you watching along. I hope you'll subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. Have a blessed day and I'll see you again next time when I'll be back helping you to hand make with love.